Satipatthana Sutta Discourse on Mindfulness Translated by Rupert Gethin This is what I have heard. Once the Blessed One was staying in the country of the Kurus, in a small town belonging to the Kurus, called Kamasa Dhamma. There the Blessed One addressed the monks. Monks? Yes, sir, the monks replied to the Blessed One. Monks, this is a path leading directly to the purification of beings, to passing beyond sorrow and grief to the disappearance of suffering and discontent, to finding the proper way to the direct experience of nirvana, namely, the four ways of establishing mindfulness. What for? Here, a monk lives watching the body as body. He is determined, fully aware, mindful, overcoming his longing for and discontent with the world. He lives watching feelings as feelings. He is determined, fully aware, mindful, overcoming his longing for and discontent with the world. He lives watching mind as mind. He is determined, fully aware, mindful, overcoming his longing for and discontent with the world. He lives watching qualities as qualities. He is determined, fully aware, mindful, overcoming his longing for and discontent with the world. And how does a monk live watching the body as body? Here, a monk sits down in the forest, or at the root of a tree, or in some deserted house. He crosses his legs, straightens his body, and establishes mindfulness in front of him. Just mindful, he breathes in. Just mindful, he breathes out. As he breathes in a long breath, he knows he is breathing in a long breath. Or as he breathes out a long breath, he knows he is breathing out a long breath. Or as he breathes in a short breath, he knows he is breathing in a short breath. Or as he breathes out a short breath, he knows he is breathing out a short breath. He practices so that he breathes in, experiencing the whole body. He practices so that he breathes out, experiencing the whole body. He practices so that he breathes in, tranquilizing the activity of the body. He practices so that he breathes out, tranquilizing the activity of the body. Just as a skilled turner or his apprentice in making a long stroke knows he is making a long stroke, or in making a short stroke knows he is making a short stroke. In exactly the same way, as the monk breathes in or out a long or short breath, he knows he is breathing in or out a long or short breath. He practices so that he breathes in and out, experiencing the whole body and tranquilizing the activity of the body. In this way, he lives watching the body within as body, or he lives watching the body without as body, or he lives watching the body within and without as body. He lives watching the way things arise in the case of the body, or he lives watching the way things pass in the case of the body, or he lives watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. Furthermore, his mindfulness that there is body 
is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives watching the body as body. Again, monks, when a monk is walking, he knows he is walking. When he is standing, he knows he is standing. When he is sitting, he knows he is sitting. When he is lying down, he knows he is lying down. In whatever posture his body is, he knows it is in that posture. In this way, he lives watching the body within as body, or he lives watching the body without as body, or he lives watching the body within and without as body. He lives watching the way things arise in the case of the body, or he lives watching the way things pass in the case of the body, or he lives watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. Furthermore, his mindfulness that there is body is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives watching the body as body. Again, monks, in moving forward and turning back, a monk acts with full awareness. In looking ahead and looking around, he acts with full awareness. In bending and straightening his limbs, he acts with full awareness. In wearing his inner and outer robes and carrying his arms bowl, he acts with full awareness. In eating, drinking, chewing and swallowing, he acts with full awareness. In defecating and urinating, he acts with full awareness. In walking, standing, sitting, falling asleep, waking up, speaking and keeping silent, he acts with full awareness. In this way, he lives watching the body, within and without as body, watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. His mindfulness that there is body is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives watching the body as body. Again, monks, a monk reviews this body from the soles of his feet upwards and from the ends of the hair on his head downwards, as enveloped in skin and full of various kinds of impurity. Here in this body there are head hairs, body hairs, nails, teeth, skin, flesh, sinews, bones, bone marrow, kidneys, heart, liver, diaphragm, spleen, lungs, large intestine, small intestine, gorge, feces, bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat, tears, grease, saliva, snot, oil of the joints and urine. As if there were a sack with an opening at either end full of various sorts of grain, which a man with good eyes should review thus. Here are rice grains, here mung beans, here kidney beans, here sesame seeds. In exactly the same way, a monk reviews this body from the soles of his feet upwards and from the ends of the hair on his head downwards as enveloped in skin and full of various kinds of impurity. In this way, he lives watching the body, within and without as body, watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. 
His mindfulness that there is body is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching the body as body. Again, monks, a monk reviews this body, whatever its position, whatever its posture, by way of the elements. In this body, there is the earth element, the water element, the fire element, the wind element. As if a skilled butcher or his apprentice were to slaughter a cow and sit down at a crossroads, having divided it up into portions. In exactly the same way a monk reviews this body, whatever its position, whatever its posture, by way of the elements. In this way he lives watching the body, within and without as body, watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. His mindfulness that there is body is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching the body as body. Again, monks, a monk considers this body as though he were looking at a body left in a charnel ground, one, two, or three days dead, bloated, livid, and festering. This body is of the same nature, of the same constitution. It has not got beyond this. In this way he lives watching the body, within and without, as body, watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. His mindfulness that there is body is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching the body as body. Again, monks, a monk considers this body as though he were looking at a body left in a charnel ground, eaten by crows, hawks, vultures, dogs, jackals, or other animals. This body is of the same nature, of the same constitution. It has not got beyond this. In this way, he lives watching the body, within and without as body, watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. His mindfulness that there is body is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching the body as body. Again, monks, a monk considers this body as though he were looking at a body left in a charnel ground, a skeleton with flesh and blood, held together with sinews or a skeleton with no flesh but smeared with blood and held together with sinews, or a skeleton without flesh or blood held together with sinews, or disconnected bones scattered around, a hand bone here, a foot bone here, a leg bone here, a rib bone here, a hip bone here, a back bone here, the skull here. This body is of the same nature, of the same constitution. It has not got beyond this. In this way he lives watching the body, within and without, as body. Watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. His mindfulness that there is body is established, so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching the body as body. Again, monks, a monk considers this body as though he were looking at a body left in a charnel ground, white bones looking like shells, 
or piled up bones, more than a year old, or rotten, crumbling bones. This body is of the same nature, of the same constitution. It has not got beyond this. In this way he lives watching the body within as body, or he lives watching the body without as body, or he lives watching the body within and without as body. He lives watching the way things arise in the case of the body, or he lives watching the way things pass in the case of the body, or he lives watching the way things arise and pass in the case of the body. Furthermore, his mindfulness that there is body is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives watching the body as body. And how does a monk live watching feelings as feelings? Here, when a monk feels a pleasant feeling, he knows he is feeling a pleasant feeling. When he feels an unpleasant feeling, he knows he is feeling an unpleasant feeling. When he feels a neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling, he knows he is feeling a neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling. When he feels a pleasant feeling connected with the world, he knows he is feeling a pleasant feeling connected with the world. When he feels a pleasant feeling unconnected with the world, he knows he is feeling a pleasant feeling unconnected with the world. When he feels an unpleasant feeling connected with the world, he knows he is feeling an unpleasant feeling connected with the world. When he feels an unpleasant feeling unconnected with the world, he knows he is feeling an unpleasant feeling unconnected with the world. When he feels a neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling connected with the world, he knows he is feeling a neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling connected with the world. When he feels a neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling unconnected with the world, he knows he is feeling a neither pleasant nor unpleasant feeling unconnected with the world. In this way, he lives watching feelings within as feelings or he lives watching feelings without as feelings, or he lives watching feelings within and without as feelings. He lives watching the way things arise in the case of feelings, or he lives watching the way things pass in the case of feelings, or he lives watching the way things arise and pass in the case of feelings. Furthermore, his mindfulness that there are feelings is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching feelings as feelings. And how does a monk live watching mind as mind? Here, a monk knows a mind affected with desire as a mind affected with desire. He knows a mind unaffected with desire as a mind unaffected with desire. He knows a mind affected with hate as a mind affected with hate. He knows a mind unaffected with hate as a mind unaffected with hate. He knows a mind affected with delusion as a mind affected with delusion. He knows a mind unaffected with delusion as a mind unaffected with delusion. He knows a dull mind as a dull mind. He knows a distracted mind as a distracted mind. He knows a higher mind as a higher mind. He knows a lower mind as a lower mind. He knows an inferior mind as an inferior mind. He knows a superior mind as a superior mind. He knows a concentrated mind as a concentrated mind. 
He knows an unconcentrated mind as an unconcentrated mind. He knows a mind that is freed as a mind that is freed. He knows a mind that is not freed as a mind that is not freed. In this way he lives watching mind within as mind, or he lives watching mind without as mind, or he lives watching mind within and without as mind. He lives watching the way things arise in the case of mind, or he lives watching the way things pass in the case of mind, or he lives watching the way things arise and pass in the case of mind. Furthermore, his mindfulness that there is mind is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching mind as mind. And how does a monk live watching qualities as qualities? Here, a monk lives watching qualities as qualities in terms of the five hindrances. How? When sense desire is present in him, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how sense desire arises. When it has arisen, he knows how it is abandoned. And when it has been abandoned, he knows how it will not arise in the future. When ill will is present in him, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how ill will arises. When it has arisen, he knows how it is abandoned. And when it has been abandoned, he knows how it will not arise in the future. When dullness and lethargy are present in him, a monk knows dullness and lethargy are present in him. And when they are not present in him, he knows they are not present in him. And so, when they have not arisen, he knows how dullness and lethargy arise. When they have arisen, he knows how they are abandoned. And when they have been abandoned, he knows how they will not arise in the future. When agitation and worry are present in him, a monk knows they are present in him. And when they are not present in him, he knows they are not present in him. And so, when they have not arisen, he knows how agitation and worry arise. When they have arisen, he knows how they are abandoned. And when they have been abandoned, he knows how they will not arise in the future. When doubt is present in him, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how doubt arises. When it has arisen, he knows how it is abandoned. And when it has been abandoned, he knows how it will not arise in the future. In this way, he lives watching qualities within as qualities. Or he lives watching qualities without as qualities. Or he lives watching qualities within and without as qualities. He lives watching the way things arise in the case of qualities, or he lives watching the way things pass in the case of qualities. Or he lives watching the way things arise and pass in the case of qualities. Furthermore, his mindfulness that there are qualities is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching qualities as qualities, in terms of the five hindrances. Again, monks. A monk lives, watching qualities as qualities, in terms of the five aggregates of attachment. How? 
Here, a monk thinks, such is physical form, such its arising, such its disappearance, such is feeling, such its arising, such its disappearance, such is recognition, such its arising, such its disappearance, such are volitional forces, such their arising, such their disappearance, such is consciousness, such its arising, such its disappearance. In this way, he lives, watching qualities, within and without as qualities, watching the way things arise and pass in the case of qualities. His mindfulness that there are qualities is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching qualities as qualities, in terms of the five aggregates of attachment. Again, monks, a monk lives watching qualities as qualities in terms of the six internal and external spheres of sense. How? Here, a monk knows the eye and he knows visible forms. He also knows the fetter that arises dependent on the two. And so he knows how a fetter which has not arisen arises. He knows how a fetter that has arisen is abandoned. He knows how a fetter that has been abandoned will not arise in the future. A monk knows the ear, and he knows sounds. A monk knows the nose, and he knows smells. A monk knows the tongue, and he knows tastes. A monk knows the body, and he knows objects of touch. A monk knows the mind, and he knows ideas. He also knows the fetter that arises dependent on the two. And so he knows how a fetter which has not arisen arises. He knows how a fetter that has arisen is abandoned. He knows how a fetter that has been abandoned will not arise in the future. In this way he lives watching qualities within and without as qualities, watching the way things arise and pass in the case of qualities. His mindfulness that there are qualities is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching qualities as qualities in terms of the six internal and external spheres of sense. Again, monks, a monk lives watching qualities as qualities in terms of the seven constituents of awakening. How? When mindfulness is present in him as a constituent of awakening, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how mindfulness arises as a constituent of awakening. When it has arisen, he knows how it is brought to full development. When investigation of qualities is present in him as a constituent of awakening, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how investigation of qualities arises as a constituent of awakening. When it has arisen, he knows how it is brought to full development. When energy is present in him as a constituent of awakening, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how energy arises as a constituent of awakening. When it has arisen, he knows how it is brought to full development. When joy is present in him as a constituent of awakening, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, 
he knows how joy arises as a constituent of awakening. When it has arisen, he knows how it is brought to full development. When tranquillity is present in him as a constituent of awakening, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how tranquillity arises as a constituent of awakening. When it has arisen, he knows how it is brought to full development. When concentration is present in him as a constituent of awakening, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how concentration arises as a constituent of awakening. When it has arisen, he knows how it is brought to full development. When equanimity is present in him as a constituent of awakening, a monk knows it is present in him. And when it is not present in him, he knows it is not present in him. And so, when it has not arisen, he knows how equanimity arises as a constituent of awakening. When it has arisen, he knows how it is brought to full development. In this way, he lives watching qualities within and without as qualities, watching the way things arise and pass in the case of qualities. His mindfulness that there are qualities is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching qualities as qualities in terms of the seven constituents of awakening. Again, monks. A monk lives watching qualities as qualities in terms of the four noble truths. How? Here, a monk truly understands what suffering is. He truly understands what the arising of suffering is. He truly understands what the cessation of suffering is. He truly understands what the practice leading to the cessation of suffering is. In this way he lives watching qualities within as qualities, or he lives watching qualities without as qualities, or he lives watching qualities within and without as qualities. He lives watching the way things arise in the case of qualities, or he lives watching the way things pass in the case of qualities. Or he lives watching the way things arise and pass in the case of qualities. Furthermore, his mindfulness that there are qualities is established so that there is knowledge and recollection in full degree. He lives independently, not holding on to anything in the world. This is how a monk lives, watching qualities as qualities in terms of the Four Noble Truths. Now, monks... If anyone should cultivate these four ways of establishing mindfulness in this way for seven years, one of two results can be expected for him. Knowledge here and now. Or, if some trace of attachment still remains, the state of non-return. Let alone seven years, if anyone should cultivate these four ways of establishing mindfulness in this way for six years, for five years, for four years, for three years, for two years, for one year. Let alone one year, if anyone should cultivate these four ways of establishing mindfulness in this way for seven months, one of two results can be expected for him. Knowledge, here and now, or, if some trace of attachment still remains, the state of non-return. Let alone seven months, if anyone should cultivate these four ways of establishing mindfulness in this way for six months, for five months, for four months, for three months, for two months, for one month, for a fortnight, let alone a fortnight, if anyone should cultivate these four ways of establishing mindfulness in this way for seven days, one of two results can be expected for him. Knowledge, here and now, or... 
if some trace of attachment still remains, the state of non-return. This is the reason it was said that this is a path leading directly to the purification of beings, to passing beyond sorrow and grief, to the disappearance of suffering and discontent, to finding the proper way to the direct experience of nirvana, namely, the four ways of establishing mindfulness. This is what the Blessed One said. Gladdened, those monks felt joy at the Blessed One's words.